Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I am back today to do another book review for the self-published science fiction contest, year three. And the book I have finished is Prompt Excursion by Lewis Kingston. Prompt Excursion follows Johansson, and I don't think they ever give her first name, as her, her suit is first trying to wake her up, and then as she is waking up on a damaged spacecraft and doesn't know what's going on. She starts going through the processes following her training of getting the ship up and running again, and then about a third of the way through, we do get a second character named Law. And Law is a scientist researcher trying to get the ship to a certain destination, but doesn't want to give Johansson all the information. Keeps telling Johansson stop, to stop asking questions. And so Johansson is trying to figure out what is going on and trying to think why she would take a job that seems to be against her principles as a person and trying to also make sure that she can get home alive. She is wanting to meet her daughter who she hasn't seen for a few years and rebuild a relationship that she thinks is broken. So that's a basic synopsis of this book. So I would consider this a hard sci-fi space opera or at least the beginning to a space opera series. The author has said that he's working on a sequel to this book. So, I mean, so that's where I'm thinking it's probably going to be more of a space opera series. And I'm considering this hard sci-fi because of the detail it goes into the different systems of the ship. You can tell that the author has thought long and hard about how everything is going to work together. However, as someone who has no technical expertise, I can't tell you if everything actually makes sense or not. But based off of the other hard sci-fi I've read, this is tracking. I'm going to start off with something that I don't typically like in books, and that is the amnesia plot or the amnesia trope where somebody wakes up and has no memory. Especially when it is completely gone and they don't remember who they are or anything. In this case, Johansson remembers who she is. It's her most recent short-term memory that is impaired. So she remembers her training of being on ships, her, her job, but she doesn't remember why she signed on for this specific trip. She remembers the name of the ship that she was on and she knows that this isn't the, that ship as she investigates further. But she doesn't remember what happened. She she vaguely remembers why she was there, but her memory has some gaps. And surprisingly, that type of amnesia worked for me. And it was explained that, you know, partially she has a concussion on her head that is messing with her memories. And second, that her ship, when trying to wake her up, had administered some different chemical cocktails. And that is probably affecting her short-term memory as well. So while the amnesia trope is something I typically detest, and if I knew about that before I started reading this, I probably would have been like, pass, I'm not interested in that setup. But because this was a contest book, I didn't look at the synopsis, I just started reading. And I'm glad that I did. This book starts off kind of slow. Like I said, at the beginning, her suit's trying to wake her up. And when she finally does wake up, it's when you're going through the process of her, as she is trying to figure out how to warm up, how to stay alive, it has a very slower kind of pace. And I think for a lot of people who are picking up a book, especially if they think that it's a space opera, they're going to be looking for something faster. And this is really more contemplative at the beginning. You're really feeling what the character is feeling as she's trying to figure out what the hell is going on and wonders if she's going to live through this experience. 
And so because of that slow pace, depending on what type of reader you are, that could feel like it's dragging on. And in that case, I think maybe the introduction of Law, when we meet her, could have been a relief for those readers who are going to find this first part very slow. Because now you have somebody to talk with, you get the dialogue banter, where before you're completely in her own head. Maybe she says things out loud, maybe not. But I don't think that the slow start detracts from this. In many ways, I think it is more reminiscent of older literature, which has kind of slow starts. For example, like Babel by R. Kuang, that has more of like a slow start as Robin's finding out his world. To me, these both kind of felt a, the same. Johansson's trying to figure out her world, and right from the beginning, we get to also see that she is competent at her job. And even though what she's doing isn't necessarily 100% her job, you can see that she has had the training and is using the training to get through what needs to happen. Really through the beginning of this, where we're seeing everything she has to do, that we kind of start to feel the scope of this ship. I am sad that there wasn't like a diagram kind of explaining where the ship was. They talked about rings and then a train corridors. And so it was kind of hard for me to visualize the layout of the ship, but I got the impression it was huge. It, it is a massive ship because there are lots of different parts. And the fact that she has to take a train to engineering to as she's trying to figure out why power isn't reaching everything. It was fun getting to see Johansson get to be inventive. Again, as she's trying to figure out what's going on with the ship, where they are, and you can see not only is it when you get to really see her use her expertise and how she uses it slightly different than you would expect. That was just really cool to watch. Or it was really cool to read. And then when we are introduced to law, that's when things kind of start to speed up and this like slower sci-fi begins to feel more like a thriller because now you have a character who is, well, I am an executive officer, so I outrank you, which means you have to do what I say. However, I'm not gonna give you any information or answer your questions, even though you have issues. And, oh, your suit's not working? Well, it's more important that we do these things first. It, it was very clear that Law only cares about what Law cares about, and she only cares about Johansson, and as far as Johansson is helping Law complete Law's goals. And we can see Johansson sees all this, like we are 100% always in Johansson's mind, her point of view. And she, she is seeing that, okay, Law is very much self-absorbed in her own interests and she's working with that. One of the reasons I think this is also going to be a series, is, or at least definitely there's a second book, is because there is a prologue. And in that prologue, it is the one time we're not following Johansson. And we're getting a view of the final effects of the thriller part of the story from other people's points of view. And yeah, things are set up to go further. What is kind of going on? However, I don't necessarily think that the story needed that prologue. That prologue could always have been like an opening to a second book. This book tells a complete story following Johansson and what Johansson is wanting. So if you are someone who enjoys slower sci-fi or doesn't mind being in the main character's head for most of it, likes hearing kind of how the systems work as the characters are trying to fix technical problems, then this is probably going to be for you. If you have read this, I would love to know your thoughts and I would really like to read that next book by Kingston. I hope he publishes it here soon. Thank you and have a great day.